get my six. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Homesteading Off The Grid. Got some really neat stories for you today. Uh, stories centered around haunted houses. And here, well, I didn't think I was the only one who potentially lived in one. A lot of you out there live in haunted houses as well and we've got the proof in the pudding right here. Before we get into our first story, I want to remind you all, if you have a, a story of anything related to the paranormal, supernatural, cryptozoological, spiritual realm, anything taking place on the other side of the veil, you can submit it to the channel now, crazylake at mail.com. Please do your best to kind of clean it up before you do. Keep them under 400 words, under 500, four, four to 500 words. Um, please proofread them. Uh, stories that are that require the least amount of corrections will be read first. Uh, oh, and before we get to the first one, check out the really new cool thing straight out of Crazy Lakes Wood Shop as of today. Isn't that neat? It's like I'm making all these handmade uh, Halloween decorations mostly from reclaimed lumber or recycled lumber and I'm like how can you not have pink ghosts I mean that's what everybody likes I mean everybody's into pink ghosts I even googled it there were none there was like zero so I was like how can this be so anyway now there are pink ghosts with beady little eyes on the internet and available in our Etsy store the link of which is in the description box below so uh, I've got four stories for you today, two from one person and uh, then two from two other people. Let's get right to it. Uh, this one is called, She Lived in Not One, But Two Haunted Houses. Let's see, were we given permission to use the name? Yes, we were. Remember, when you submit your story, if you want us to use your name, give us permission to do so. If not, if you want to remain anonymous, as, as one of our stories today here is anonymous, let us know that as well, okay? This comes from Julie. Grisomer, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name, Julie. Julie says, while growing up, my family and I lived in a house that had been built in the early 1900s. Same as ours. Ours was built in 1903. Haunted AF. Even though old houses might seem creepy to most folks, we never felt threatened in this old house or as if we were in harm's way. One day, when I was 14 years old, I ran up to my bedroom and I noticed that there was a $1 bill sticking out of the wall. It was a paneling wall, and the paneling was placed together tightly, and this $1 bill was tightly stuck between two of the panels. It had never been there before, this $1 bill, and the strangest thing about it is that I could see the date on it. It was from 1920. I ran back downstairs and told my mom, and when we went upstairs together to look, the dollar bill was gone. Even though she never saw it, my mother believed me. I'm 50 years old now, and when my husband and I bought our family's house 10 years ago now, we bought one that is also from the early 1900s, like the one I'd grown up in. There have been numerous times while living in this house that I have heard music from out of nowhere. It's big band era music, and my oldest daughter has heard it from time to time too. However, we have never felt threatened when hearing the music, and we have never been harmed. Once, I was in the kitchen, and I heard what sounded like phone static. We had a traditional phone in our house, but our landline had not been installed yet. I went to the phone, and sure enough, it was resting in the cradle, so there is no way I could have heard the noise coming from this phone, especially since, again, the landline had not yet been activated. Another time at night, while my husband was gone off to work, I was laying in bed in our downstairs bedroom. All three of my girls were asleep upstairs. I looked out my bedroom door and I saw the shadow of a girl on the wall in the living room. I assumed it was my youngest and that she was getting ready to come into my room and get into bed with me. However, when she never came, I went into the living room to check on her and the shadow just disappeared. I crept upstairs and all three of my girls were in bed, sleeping. For some reason, my husband has never experienced anything in our house and all activity stopped about a year after we moved in. I guess the ghosts are happy to live with us or we scared them and they left. You can share these stories. Julie Greisimer. Julie, I'll tell you, the final story that's coming at you here at the end of this video might 
change your mind a little bit about what's going on there or what has gone on or why you haven't experienced things and especially why your husband never has not trying to scare you but uh stay tuned you might be scared all right here's one called she never thought she'd live in a haunted house until she did i'm checking to see at the end if i was given permission to use the name or not yes you may mention my name sally shoots looks like s-c-h-u-e-t-z sally shoots all right kevin i want to start by telling you that i watch your videos daily i really enjoyed watching and hearing about you and your family's summer road trip to the grand canyon also i have bought more than one of your books and when reading them i cannot seem to put them down i keep wanting to read and see what comes next I've read your novel, From the Graves of Babes, more than once, and I tell others that they have to read this book and others written by you. Please, don't stop. Flattery will get you everywhere. Uh, by the way, we do have print copies of From the Graves of Babes available in our Etsy store with an autograph. Link is in the description box below. Of course, you can always get them from Amazon in print or Kindle continuation of the story here i have heard of many other people living in haunted houses and i've watched many videos on the topic but i've always found myself saying this will never happen to me however i've found that i've been wrong while in my house there have been times that it felt like something had touched me tugged on my hair moved an object while i was not looking and even made items fall off the kitchen counter when these things have happened in the past i would say stop touching me or cut that out and simply not think anything about it that was until, however, my cat Lily started acting out, obviously seeing things that were there that I could not. Things that I wanted to believe were not real. Lily started indicating that she was seeing things I could not by sitting on her back legs, looking into a bedroom that did not have lights on. She sat in that position for about five minutes, looking into the bedroom like something was moving around in there. I still didn't think as much as I should have about it, perhaps, because Lily is a very jumpy cat. However... I would soon be convinced. A couple of months after Lily started staring at things I could not see, the Roku would turn on without anyone touching the remote. After a few times of that happening, it simply coming on by itself, it began beeping as if someone was surfing channels. There was one evening, in particular, when the Roku kept turning on, and I would turn it off, and then it would come back on again. I gave up after about three times of this happening and left it alone for the evening. When I woke the next morning, the Roku was back on, but in the screens, but in screensaver mode, so I just turned it off. About three days after that, I was sitting in the house, and all was quiet, when suddenly the Roku popped back on. A new channel started downloading, and then a home improvement show came on. The show paused so the information about the show could be read, and then it started back up. I didn't even have the remote near me. I got the remote to check out the new downloads made on Roku. There was only one new channel downloaded, the channel that had been playing the Home Improvement Show and which also plays cooking shows. Ever since this started happening, it has not stopped. The Roku will come on several times each week and always after 2 a.m. Uh, side note insertion here, 3 a.m. Is, is the witching hour. It's not midnight. It's because the devil mocked the Trinity. So it's interesting that this starts happening after 2 a.m. I'd be curious to know how close to 3 a.m. it's happening. All right, back to the story. I believe now that I do have a ghost in my house. I'm not scared, and it hasn't caused harm to anyone or anything. I truly believe that the ghost could be my dad, who died three years ago, or a very close high school friend of mine who was killed six years ago. You may mention my name. I've got your six, Sally Shoots. Great story, Sally. Uh, I'm glad you're not scared. Um, Possibly it is your dad. Possibly it is an old friend. And, you know, I mentioned the witching hour and the devil mocking the Trinity and stuff. A lot of times people will just associate that with demonic activity. That's not necessarily the case. It simply is the case that that's around the time uh, of the 24-hour day cycle that the veil is very, very thin. Um, many people believe it's midnight. Again, others believe it's 3 a.m. This is at least happening between midnight and 3, so it's... Close enough for government work. All right. Uh, now, our first stories submitter was that Julie. I believe the name was. I said I wasn't trying to. Yeah, Julie. Wasn't trying to set you up to be scared, but this is going to give you something else to think about. Since you have lived in not just one, but two haunted houses. And 
Let's give a, uh, this will give certainly many of our viewers uh, something to think about, both who do see him, her, it, or they there, which wasn't there at the beginning, uh, and those who, who don't, and those who think I'm crazy and everybody else who claims to see things are crazy as well. Man, it's like 70 days to Halloween. I just cannot wait. All right, back to it. Uh, no, I thought this one was anonymous. This one comes to us from Regina Higgins, who says, feel free to use my name. I'm too old to care what people think anymore. Right on, Regina. Kevin, thank you for finally adding an email address where we can reach you on your YouTube channel. I've been a fan of your channel from the beginning. I like how your channel is unique in that you never know what you're going to get. One day it might be him, her, it, or they creeping around on your property just out of range of an identifying close-up of just what in the heck they are, or it might be a creepy ghost story. I even like the simple talks you have with your viewers at times about some of your life experiences and things you've learned along the way. I'm old enough to be your mother, but still I have found myself learning so much from your wisdom, which frankly, I believe you possess in an extremely high quantity for someone not just your age, but any age. Considering where you've been and what you've done, from the war in Iraq to life in the Philippines, publishing books, all of which I've read and love, by the way, and working on Wall Street, it's easy to see how you've garnered one heck of a well of ideas to pull from for your stories. And no wonder so many of them seem so real. My personal favorite so far is Isle of Capri, and I'm anxiously waiting for October Nights Part 2, 31 more tales for the Halloween season to be released. Soon, soon. I'll tell you what. I'm finished. I'm. I've done all final edits, all final rewrites. Uh, that's why I've had time to actually get to some of these stories you folks have emailed in and clean them up enough to be able to come out here and present them properly the way they are deserving of being presented. Okay. So send your stories. Crazylake at mail dot com. Okay. All flattery aside, here is the reason for my message. Many people believe they live in haunted houses. And I, and I have no doubt that many people do, but I have found through my personal experiences that some people act like a magnet for all things paranormal. I do not want to go as far as to say that these people are haunted because I think that's too bold. And it's not that they are possessed, not even close. I just feel like there are some people that entities on the other side of the veil know can see and or hear them. So I believe these are the people to whom the others reveal themselves. I believe you are one of these people, Kevin, and I believe I am as well. I also believe it's why some of us can see things in your videos while others cannot. I have noticed some people get really mean in your comment section and call you crazy, and I think these people are simply frustrated because they cannot see what you and I and so many others who enjoy your channel, like I do, can. I have numerous stories that I can and will tell you in time, but I just wanted to finally reach out to you since you finally made this email address available and say hello. Keep up the good work and I cannot wait until October. Your viewer for life, Regina Higgins. And then of course you put the PS, feel free to use my name, too old to care what people think anymore. Gosh, man, the memories come flashing back. I remember back when I was a uh, financial planner and I did door-to-door -door calls, you know, cold calling, trying to garner up business. Um, I remember meeting a woman, can't even remember her name. I can see her in, in my head right now. She was like late fifties. Um, so calm. Uh, she was a divorced woman. She had an adult son, probably in his thirties, very attractive woman. She was fit. She took care of herself. She ate a healthy diet. And I remember the first time we got together, and I'd been, this is right outside of the Charlottesville, Virginia area. I guess earlier that day, I'd met a bunch of uh, women and men not quite as peaceful as her. They were in their 30s and 40s and kind of um, not Southern originally is all I will say. So I was really grateful to meet her that day because she was so calm and uh, peaceful and cordial and polite and she wasn't mean and she actually went on to end up doing a little bit of business with me when i mentioned to her about her demeanor and how how much i appreciated it she told me she says you know don't be too harsh on those younger folks and i know it now because i'm 48 and i've kind of been where those people were at the time 
stress, man. I mean, especially when you're in an area where folks have a tendency to bite off more than they can chew financially, living in houses they really can't afford, driving cars they really can't afford. I mean, just credit stretched to the max. Um, they kind of have short fuses. So she explained to me, once those folks get through that stage of life, or once they kind of wake up and realize they don't really need to live like that, which is something fortunately I did before I ever kind of entered living that way, um, you, you just, you become more peaceful. And she mentioned the change of life. And she, she, she just told me, she, she, she says flat out, I've been through menopause. So I'm just, she goes, I don't get wound up like I used to. Um, what was my point of that? I don't know. I just I thought of that. Uh, there was, there was a point to that. Oh, about being too old to, to, to care what people think anymore. Uh, there's not necessarily an age limit on that. I've found it's just like, it's a mindset and a, and a, and a state of mind. Um, if you're not all worked up and stressed out and stretched thin, who cares? Not just the least little old nothing will get y'all, you know, wound up and riled up. And I do want to give a shout out, and, and I'm, I'm wrapping it up here. I don't want to go on too long, even though October Nights Part 2 has been put to bed per se, and we're just waiting on it any day. Um, I do have a lot of other things I want to spend time doing today. I'm going to go on a nice, long family walk with my family. Um, Jason B. from North Carolina submitted a story yesterday. don't know if you folks watched the video. It's one from yesterday. Go back and watch it, or if you're watching this six months from now. It's a video titled... Uh, alert, beware this rodent-eating cryptid about the Swamp Man down there in eastern North Carolina, the marshes of eastern North Carolina. What an amazing story that was. And I wanted to follow up with a little a little bit more. Um, Jason B. had said in his email, uh, he wanted advice as a writer because he mentioned he, he, he wants to write. It was a great story, Jason, if you're watching. Um, as you could tell when you listen to the video, it was edited considerably, uh, cleaned up quite a bit. Here's some advice I want to give you uh, and anybody who is an aspiring writer. When you go back through and proofread your work, and Jason, I could tell you obviously proofread that. Good job. Don't just read it and hear it in your head. Read it aloud so you can hear it not just in your head by way of through your eyes, but so you can also hear it through your ears. Because what this does is this gives you an advantage in that you've got another one of your senses looking for mistakes or maybe things that could have been worded better and do not get caught up in the 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 thought process of well they'll know what i mean or well i mean when somebody reads this they'll know what i mean no they won't uh say what you mean to say especially when you start working with editors because if you say oh well they'll know what i mean and they don't the editor can can change that or reword that because obviously enough has not been said to where it completely changes the entire story so those are my two bits of advice and then my biggest piece of advice i can give you jason down in north carolina again thanks for your story about the swamp man and everybody else thank you for your stories anybody who wants to write uh go read a book called on writing by stephen king he's kind of gone out there since 2016 with a lot of his views and that's going to be addressed in October um, and uh, or, uh, but he's, he's in my humble opinion I believe the greatest writer who's ever lived uh, he wrote a book called On Writing and read it use that as your Bible as a writer um, it was so powerful to me that when I was finished reading it because he, he gives the advice if you want to be good at writing you need to do only two things read a lot and write a lot I told myself after reading that book, I am not writing another word until I have read at least 100 full-length novels I've never read before. And I, that, that's a true story. Um, once I hit the 50 mark, which took me about five or six months because I went through a period where I vehemently read like 10 novels a month, I started writing some short stories and I didn't even attempt another full length novel until I'd completed that task of reading 100 novels. When you read, when you just suck it in so much other people's works, like credible writers, it, it, it just, it's, it's like riding a bicycle. It comes naturally. You, if you go read from the graves of babes, which was plugged by one of our submitters here, which, which is a good story. It's told okay, but it certainly is not well written. And then you go compare that with a book like The Lunatic, the novel I released last year, or even 
The Isle of Capri. Isle of Capri, which is the first full-length novel I wrote after reading those 100 novels, after taking King's advice. You would think those books were written by two different people. Um, so that's my advice. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. Uh, remember, if you have a story, submit it to the channel. It's crazylake at mail.com. Please do your best to, you know, I know not everybody's a writer, not everybody's an editor, but just please do your best to proofread it and clean it up a little bit. That'll make our work less, uh, much less on this end, and we'll be able to get it out here to the viewers uh, sooner. So, see you for more next time. 70-ish days until Halloween.